Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and over here on the upper right hand corner of my shelf you can see there's a bin that's got a number of different things laid out on it. As we get closer you'll see what those things are and they're basically the food that we're going to be using to feed this bin today. And if you're into vermicomposting for um, the reason of creating and making your own vermicompost for gardening purposes then you'll appreciate that uh, for me, it's kind of a special day. Today is the 15th of May, which is the um, last frost date for my grow zone, meaning you're pretty much guaranteed planting something on May 15th in my grow zone, at least, is guaranteed not to be damaged by frost after that day. So um, in my case, I already had my stuff in the garden on the 1st of May, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Back here about a week ago, there was freezing temperatures and I did have to protect my plants from them. So. Uh, you know, you got to be careful if you jump the gun on certain things. But uh, basically, um, with today being the 15th of May, it, uh, it puts us 10 days out since the last time we checked in on this bin. 10 days since this bin was fed. And there's also another uh, milestone date today. Hey Siri, how many days have passed since the 5th of February? It was 100 days ago. 100 days. So it's been 100 days since this bin has been in service. And since that time, over those 100 days, counting the food that was included when the bin was originally built, there have been 10 feedings. Today's feeding is gonna be very much like what we normally see in these feedings. It's just some kitchen scraps that I bring down here. Um, here it's just some potato skins and a, uh, a paper towel that was used to keep them in order, some banana peels. This is what I like to keep the used coffee in. We've got some used coffee here as well as some grit. In my case, it's pulverized eggshell. Grit is a good supplement for your worm bins because the worms do need something to help them digest their food. They've got gizzards, not stomachs, and they need some sort of a hard, coarse substance to help with the digestion of their food. So this 100-day-old bin is getting its 10th feeding today, so let's get it up on the bench and get started. Get everything over here. so you can see what we're doing. Ten days ago when we last fed we had just bought closure to a pocket feeding experiment where we had moved every feeding around from originally being in the middle to each of the four corners and then back to the middle again. So each of those separate locations were each fed separately over the course of um, ten days lapsing in between each so over the past sixty days. So for the past couple months, this bin was um, kind of putting the, the worms to a little exercise regimen, setting their food source around and around, um, kind of giving the worms an opportunity to visit all the different areas within the bin to help break down the material. The material's really looking beautiful as far as worm castings are concerned. The top of the surface is really nice and damp. Even this... Um, even this coffee filter that we had positioned over the last feeding is really nicely covered in worm castings and the edge of it has been nibbled down quite significantly too. Although I, I think that might have already been partially deteriorated when we initially placed it on top of the food last week. It's cool, there's kind of like a gully shape here showing um, how, the, how the surface has dropped down since the um, since the food that was in there has been gobbled up. And uh, something we talked about in the last video was maybe looking around in these bins for cocoons. And um, cocoons, in the case of worms, are their eggs. Um, but I think like in the case of red wigglers, like the worms that we have in this bin, each cocoon can have more than one baby emerge from it. And I believe we had seen quite a number of cocoons last time but right now I'm just not spotting any sometimes the light just isn't quite right or maybe maybe I've just got tired eyes <laughs> if I didn't get a good night's sleep or something or maybe I just didn't have that last cup of coffee that I would have needed to be more attentive or more uh, more observant sometimes you see tons of cocoons and it would have been fun to pick around a few um, Sometimes you just don't see them. Actually, here's one. This one's kind of got like a, a light, very light color to it. 
the lighter the color of the cocoon, the the more recent it has been since it was since it was deposited into the bin. Place it right there onto the paper. But I think I see another one over here. Looks to me like it might be a, a touch um, darker in color. As a worm uh, cocoon ages, it gets darker and darker in color. Oops. And we'll put it right here next to the other one we found. Not sure how easy it is to see, but I can tell for sure there's a distinct um, difference in their color, or at least their darkness. This one's also got a nice dark color to it. We'll add it in here alongside our little collection. Got three of them lined up over here so far. I, I just blaze through what I'm doing sometimes, um, and I fail to see because of um because I'm moving at a little bit of too fast of a pace, but when, once I slow down, I start spotting cocoons all over the place. I believe that's really the only thing that's necessary is just kind of slowing the pace down, not feeling too rushed, and then, and then they start to become quite clearly visible. Sometimes I just see them everywhere. They're just all over the place. Other times I have a, a little bit of a hard time spotting them. Sometimes I just wonder if I had better light, if I'd be, you know, prone to seeing them better. I'm kind of lining them up here now, one next to each other. And I don't plan to do anything with these cocoons. I'm just putting them out there for us to look at. They're all more or less the same. I'm trying to think of something that we can equate its size to. They're about the size of a sesame seed. If you've ever eaten a hamburger bun that has sesame seeds on it, those little white um, seeds added for a little extra flavor onto the bun, um, they're about the size of a, a sesame seed or thereabouts. So they're pretty small, but more than one worm can usually emerge from the cocoon. This one actually looks pretty dark got some good color to it. Going right back to where I found those other two. There's another third one I just spotted. Looks like they've been busy over in that corner right above where the feeding was last given to them. Looks like they've been busy uh, laying out their cocoons to get their next generation lined up to replace them. So I think we've got ourselves a pretty nice little collection of uh, worm cocoons here lined up. Going right back to where I found those other two. There's another third one I just spotted. Looks like they've been busy over in that corner. So I think we've got ourselves a pretty nice little collection of uh, worm cocoons here lined up. So now we've had a nice look at our little cocoon collection here. We'll slide it off to the side and well, it looks kind of neat there, like a string of pearls. But I think we're in here to feed. Um, celebrate the 100th day um, anniversary of this bin being launched. Here is where we fed last time, right down the middle. And that's probably the main reason the material is so damp in here. The, uh, the castings are definitely kind of mushy, kind of muddy down in here. But I'm going to uh, push the stuff I find off to the side a little bit so we can make room for the this next feeding and also get a, a sense of how the last feeding went. Got some sticks in here. They must have come in with the leaves. Can't think of where else they might have come from. Hopefully it'll break down in time. Here we're starting to see some remnants of um, the paper that we were using to wrap the food into. We were uh, We were implementing a little style of food wrapping, basically taking a piece of paper like this uh, shredded up coffee filter that I've got here, or maybe a piece of paper towel that uh, is a little bit stained but, you know, um, can be used for this purpose in your composting. 
is to take their food items and rather than just taking the food and dropping it right into there, using the piece of paper to encapsulate the food. I guess the bonus of doing it that way is that you're you're including a little bit of bedding with each feeding. And here we could see signs of those um, scraps of paper from the last feeding. However, the food that was fed is pretty much history. Just little scraps of the paper. Maybe there's like a banana. Um, that actually looks like it's pretty far along. <laughs> there's a word ha worm hanging out right inside of it. Um, this might be from a couple feedings ago. Uh, banana stem. But you know, as we put in the new portions of food, we could see signs of uh, the previous feeding. Only the bedding though, only bits of that paper that were used to wrap the food last time. You know, since I've got this relatively new coffee filter here, I can use that to mark where we last fed. So this one that was doing that job previously, this is the old coffee filter that was uh, marking where we last fed. Um, for now it's holding the cocoons that we've collected, but why don't we set those cocoons free and we'll use this piece of paper here to wrap food into as well. These potato skins were already wrapped in their own little piece of paper wrapping. We've got one last paper towel here that we can dump the remaining food scraps into. That's a pretty nice feeding for them, but they're doing a good job because this must have been about the amount that they received 10 days ago. And as you saw, there were really no traces of it. Certain things like maybe that banana stem we saw earlier, you know, it's a little bit woody, it's a little bit harder. Things like that take a little bit longer, but most of the other stuff that were given to them appear to have been eaten up already. So I definitely like the way this bin is progressing. Since we're at day 100 now, and since this material is really looking fine, um, I am thinking that it might be time to start steering this bin towards migration, meaning um, right now there's, you know, scraps of food from previous feeding scattered all throughout the bin, so there's worms throughout the bin everywhere you look. Um, at this point, we might withhold feedings going forward from this point on. They'll, they'll have to enjoy what they've got here and at some point kind of uh, revert back to eating may, maybe the less interesting items, you know, such as the all these little sticks from um, that came in with the leaves as well as all these little sticks of each leaf that has been placed in here. That's all completely ed edible stuff as well, but as long as you're giving them banana peels and other soft, easily eaten items, they're not going to pay much attention to that other stuff. They're going to, you know, eat it here and there or eat it when they need to supplement their food with a little extra carbon. But um, if we starve them of any fresh food, they'll revert to eating all that stuff up as well. And then we'll truly have a bin that's pretty much um, all castings. I mean, as I poke through here, the material to me looks like it has little bits of bedding littered in it here and there as well as some slower composting items such as sticks and stems. Let's give them just a couple more things which are um, common in a worm feeding in my wormery. One of them is a little bit of grit to go along with the food that they're going to need to digest. And a nice portion of the coffee that I bring down here every time when I feed because there's always coffee collecting around here. A pretty generous helping of coffee. So this is a very generous feeding if you look at it from that point of view. We've got um, we've got a pretty good sized worm population so I'm sure they're going to be up to the task of eating it all and hopefully they'll enjoy it because I think at this point we're going to try starving this bin for a while. Maybe we'll check in on it again in another 10 or 14 days but at this point we're going to try to steer the attention of the worms away from the regular feedings they've received 10 times over now since the bin was launched. Now we're going to let them focus on some of the other things that have been in here for some time now. Obviously I'm not going to expect a stick like this to get broken down by then. I'm not going to pick it out. Leaving it in here is not going to cause a problem. Maybe it'll soften up. Maybe it'll break down a little bit. But in the end that might just be a, an, an object that just can't be 
broken down in the amount of time that we give the bin. There will always be a chance to pick out large chunks of stuff that just isn't composting, but um, I got a feeling we're going to have mostly nice castings down in this bin, maybe in another 10 or 14 days. Let's get this thing all packed up. We're done feeding today. I believe this could be possibly the last time we <laughs> use these pieces of paper to cover up with because they are pretty far gone. They're getting beaten up and eaten up pretty nicely by the worms. And this stuff can certainly be used as bedding. So um, let's consider that as a, one of our options to use this material when we, um, when we come back in here. So that's where we stand today with our 100 day old bin. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel as well. That's really appreciated too. All right, everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.